فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters continuing on previously from our Q&A issues pertaining to Ramadan with Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan the first question is a sister is asking Ramadan is approaching and I want to get the most out of it am I permitted to take pills that stop menstruation and if I have previously taken it will I have to bring back the fasting which I have fasted Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala man arsalahu Allah rahmatan lil alameen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawmi ad-deen amma ba'd This uh, question of our sister um, What the sister has to realize is that A person is already rewarded for the righteous intention which they come with as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad and Bayhaqi in his Sunan in hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari that the Prophet said إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ سَافَرَ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلُ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ مُقِيمًا صَحِيحًا that if a person becomes sick and he's ill or he travels what is written for him is the reward of مثل ما كان يعمل مقيما صحيحا he will get the reward of that which he used to do when he was a resident as in when he was not a traveller and when he was healthy so a person gets rewarded for just the intention that they come with even if they are not doing the action even if they are not doing the action from this hadith we take from it half of the Hajar who is a great scholar who commented on this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari he has a sharh on it called Fatuh al-Bari he says about the explanation of this hadith he says وَهُوَ فِي حَقِّ مَنْ كَانَ يَعْمَلُ طَاعَةً now this hadith is speaking about anyone who is doing any righteous action so it's not only specific to what it's not only specific to the person who is who is uh, you know fasting or the person who is praying or the person who is paying zakat or not it's any act of obedience okay فَمُونِعَ and then he gets prevented so it's not just for the person who gets prevented by sickness or traveling. It can be any other any other reason, such as the situation of our sister, which is menstruation. She's been prevented of doing acts of obedience, such as fasting. وَكَانَتْ نِيَّتُهُ And her intention is, لَوْلَا If it wasn't for this prevention, الْمَانِعْ أَنْ يَدُومَ عَلَيْهَا would have been consistent on fasting in Ramadan. That's her intention. Then he says that this person, this hadith also encompasses them. كَمَا وَرَدَ ذَلِكَ صَرِيحًا عِنْدَ أَبِي دَاوُدْ أَبِي دَاوُدْ and Naysa Buriyu in his Sunan, uh, he specifically brings a narration which is more general. That it's not just for a person who is sick or traveling, but it's for any individual who is prevented from being able to fast or to pray due to a, a Islamic legislated reason which is in the case of our sister. So what I wanted to say to you, sister, is you're going to be rewarded regardless. If you leave off Ramadan as well, uh, fasting, you're still going to get the reward of all of those who are fasting, just by having the intention. As the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, in the city of Medina, there are men we've left behind, which is the Battle of Tabuk. You haven't cut a distance. You haven't gone over a valley. Everything we've done in this journey of ours, the Prophet saying to the companions, the people in Medina are sharing reward with us. They are prevented from it. They have a legislated Islamic reasoning. Okay? So what I say to the sister is, you are majura. You are rewarded, inshallah ta'ala, in the fact that you have an intention. You are rewarded. And this is something Allah ta'ala he permitted for you. Also, what you can do, sister, even that the, you're in your state of menstruation, is that you can remember Allah. And you can have on your tongue His remembrance. And the Prophet 
في كل أحواله he used to remember Allah in all of his situations so the sister has to know that she's going to be rewarded but if the sister chooses to take the pills to prevent the fasting so she can fast then her fasting is accepted inshallah ta'ala and wala yalzamuha qada and it is not necessary for her to bring back that fasting it doesn't there's no one going to demand from her to bring back that fasting okay uh, but we will say to the sister stay according to your natural state in which Allah created you and don't try to change it let your natural course take place uh, naam The second question is, me and my wife travel frequently. We sometimes fast the first day in our country, while it is the second day of fasting in the other country we are arriving at. Keeping in mind, the second country will only fast 29 days, so we end up fasting only 28 days. What should we do in this situation? Um, the asal, and we also kind of mentioned this issue before, the asal is that that a Muslim he fasts and he breaks his fast when the fasting is what a congregational obligatory fasting and since Ramadan is a obligatory congregational fasting that this brother and his wife both fast and they break their fast with the Jama'at al-Muslimin they break it with the congregation with the people that they are with okay and this is based on the statement of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam which we mentioned as-sawmu yawma tasumuna wal-fitru yawma tuftiruna wal-adha yawma tudahuna that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam he said the fasting is the day which you fast the breaking of the fast is the day which you break the fast and adha is the day you guys do adha so what we take from this hadith that is obligatory to fast to break your fast with the people, with the jama'ah. Also, Aisha radiallahu anha used this hadith as a proof against the faham and understanding of who Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. It's understanding of who Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She's not the one who narrated the hadith. The hadith is narrated by Abu Hurairah. But she used this hadith as a proof based on what? When Masruq, Masruq, he prevented himself and he stopped um, um, the fasting of Yom Arafa. Fear, fear, an yakuma, an yakuna Yom Al Nahr. He was scared that it's going to be the day of the slaughtering. Okay, Eid Al Adha. So what happened? He said, "دخلت على عائشة. I entered upon عائشة يوم عرفة. فقالت, she said." اسقوا مسروقا سويقا واكثروا حلواه عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها she said to him give مسروق سويقا سويقا is water with flour واكثروا حلواه and increase it in sugar meaning make it sweeter for him and then مسروق said فقلت because this is the day everyone's fasting. It's the Yom Arafah. It's the ninth of Dhul uh, Hijjah. The reward is high. The Prophet ﷺ is connected so much reward to this day. That your sins are going to be forgiven for you. So he's now going to explain his reasoning of why he didn't fast today. So he said to her, Inni lam yamna'uni an asuma. Nothing prevented me from fasting today. Okay? Illa anni khiftu an yakuna yawm nahri I was scared it's going to be the day of Nahr which is the day after of Arafah, which is the day of Nahr, which is Eid al-Adha. I was scared it might be it. فقالت عائشة عائشة said, النحر يوم ينحر الناس Nahr is the day where the people do Nahr, the slaughtering. والفطر يوم يفطر الناس And breaking the fast is the day where the people break the fast. So what we take from this is that if the ibadah is a ibadah, which is a congregational ibadah, like fasting, like breaking your fast, like udhiyah, and other types of worships that are like that, there is no consideration to single opinions. And it is not then permissible for a person to go away from the Muslim community and cut off from them. 
He should break his fast with them. He should fast with them and he should celebrate the udhiyah with them. But since this person is short in one particular day, so you celebrate Eid with the people, you do everything with the people, but that day that's missing from you, that day that's missing from you, then it is upon you to bring it back. So you bring it back as a qada. Because anything that's deficient from you, you have to bring it back. Because we know a month cannot be 28 days. It has to be minimum 29. Minimum, it has to be 29. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, عليه الصلاة والسلام إن أمة أمية لا نكتب ولا نحسب الشهر هكذا وهكذا. So the Prophet said we're illiterate. We're a nation who's illiterate. We don't read nor do we. We calculate. The month is this and the month is that, meaning 29 and 30. So the month cannot be less than 29, and it can't be more than 30. So since you haven't fasted a month then that particular month that's missing from you, you bring it back. You bring it back if it's short. Now, The third question is, <clears throat> I was fasting one day, and in a certain situation, I saw a person drowning. I was physically unable to help them because I was fasting. Would it be permissible for me to break my fast and help them? Now, this issue of um, saving a person who is drowning, okay, then if it's not possible for you to save this person, except to break your fast, then it becomes not only permissible, rather it becomes obligatory for you to break your fast to save this person. And you become a sinner if you don't break your fast. If you don't break your fast, you, became a, you become a sinner. And upon you is qada. You have to bring back that fasting. You have to bring back that fasting which you have uh, broken. You've broken that fast, so you have to bring it back. And there is no uh, fidya upon you. You don't have to pay, pay a vid, fidya. And the hukum that you enter is like the person who is a sick person or a person who is traveling. And those people, they just have to come with qada, not a fidya, based on the statement of Allah, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ That the person who is sick or the person who is traveling, Allah says to him, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ You're going to replace those days that you've missed with other days to come. But there's something I have to bring to the attention of this particular individual, which is, Anyone who is able to help somebody, the conditions are present. In other words, you have the way and the means to help them. Okay, such as, for example, you have a boat or you have a rope. Okay, and you could have saved that person's life. If, for example, that person ends up dying and you could have helped them and you could have saved them from this and you deliberately chose not to, then you become a sinner for leaving so. And not only that, upon you is a didia. You have to pay blood money. You would have to pay blood money, and this is the strongest of the opinions of the scholars. The reason is because you are going to be considered a person who did an action, even though you left off an action. And according to the usuliyin, the issue of a tarq According to the strongest على التحقيق من أصول من من أقوال الأصوليين, the strongest of the opinions of the أصوليين is that leaving off something is like doing something. As Allah سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran, لعن الذين كفروا من بني إسرائيل على لسان داود وعيسى بن مريم ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوا لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون. So Allah tells us in that verse. They would not stop one another evil. So if one of them saw the other one committing zina or committing anything haram, Allah tells us they never used to stop each other from it. But look what Allah says after that. Evil is, evil is that which they used to do. But they didn't do anything. They stopped and withheld from stopping each other from 
and haram. But Allah referred to it as an action. Also Allah says in another ayah, لَوْ لَا يَنْهَاهُمُ الرَّبَّانِيُونَ وَالْأَحْبَارُ عَنْ قَوْلِهِمُ الْإِثْمَ وَأَكْلِهِمُ السُّحْتِ لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Both verses Allah is saying subhanahu wa ta'ala that they're holding back Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he considered it an action. And also the sahabas, what were they doing when the Prophet ﷺ was building? They said, لَإِنْ قَعَدْنَا وَالنَّبِيُّ يَعْمَلُوا If we sit down while the Prophet ﷺ is working, لَذَاكَ مِنَّ الْعَمَلُ الْمُضَلَّلُ Then this is going to become a misguided action of ours. So if we sit down and not do anything, then this action is a misguided action. In other words, they're referring to their withholding and not doing anything as an action. And Imam Maraq al-Su'ud, he says in his kitab, Maraq al-Su'ud, Mubtaghi al-Ruqi wa-Su'ud, he says, فَكَفُّلَا بِالنَّهِي مَطْلُوبُ النَّبِي وَالتَّرْكُ فِعْلٌ فِي الصَّحِحِ الْمَذْهَبِي وَالتَّرْكُ فِعْلٌ Leaving of something and not doing it is an action. فِي صَحِحِ الْمَذْهَبِي In the strongest opinion according to the Malikiya, but no, it's actually the strongest opinion according to the محققين من أهل العلم. So if this individual does not save this person, are you with me? Then they take as though they kill this person, but not deliberately. A level below that which would be that they kill them by accident. Because your leaving is considered a action. Now. The fourth question is, what what's the ruling of swimming while fasting? Swimming in and within itself is not from the things that break your fasting. Because swimming, I might even uh, showering or bathing or whatever, um, it enters the general permissibilities. Whether you are doing it to cool yourself down or not. ولذلك الإمام البخاري رحمه الله he chaptered a باب in الصحيح he called it باب اغتسال الصائم the chapter of the fasting one showering. So here he بخاري رحمه الله he says باب اغتسال الصائم and here the اغتسال here Bukhari left it unrestrictedly, whether that ikhtisal is the masnuna, the one that's sunnah, or whether it is that which is wajib, or even the, 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 the ikhtisal, the swim, the showering, which is wajibah, or mubaha, or masnuna, that which is sunnah, it doesn't matter. All of them enters the statement of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. It's also transmitted from Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that, inna li abza, Alice is saying this about himself. He says, الْحَرَّةَ فِيهِ وَأَنَا صَائِمٌ and He said, I have أَبْزَنَ أَبْزَنَ As the Imam Ibn Hajar Allah mentions is that it is a tub. So it's a Persian word. I had a tub. If I feel heat and hotness, he dip it and I was fasting. This is again a, 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 an action of a noble companion. So dipping into that water. Now, if the person is going to dip into the water and there is a fear in your heart that that water may enter into your body, you're scared that, for example, if I do go in, it might go into my system, then the person should stay away from it. And it is not permissible for you to go forward in it. Because the Prophet ﷺ statement stands which is وَبَالِغْ فِي الْإِسْتِنْشَاقِ إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ الصَّائِمَةِ The Prophet ﷺ said to لَقِيطِ بْنُ سَبِرَةِ The Prophet ﷺ said to him, take the water into your nose. Take it, sniff it up high. إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ الصَّائِمَةِ Except when you are fasting. But the question is, is that it is haram for you to do it. But what about if the person does do it? Okay? What about if the person does do it? The strongest opinion of amongst Ahlul Ilm is that um, even though this is the opposite opinion to the Jumhur Ulama is that his fasting is still sahih ma'al karaha. 
your fasting is sahih when there is there's worry and concern here but this your fasting is sahih because um the jumhur also even believe that if you swim and there's no fear that the water will enter you they believe also your fasting breaks okay and this goes against the reality because sometimes when you're walking outside water uh, sorry air can go into your mouth or dust can go into your mouth and it goes down to your throat or sometimes a fly may go into your mouth or whatever this doesn't mean that your fasting breaks and Allah Taala knows best the fifth and final question is I am asthmatic I wanted to know is it permissible to use the asthma pump while fasting um, we have to divide the the inhaler that the person would use into two if the inhaler the inhaler which you're using it widens the wi- uh, the windpipes so if you're taking it and it just widens the windpipe then this is permissible for you to use and it is not from the thing, things that nullify or invalidate your fasting as for if the inhaler which you're taking has a viperous element in it which go through to your throat and then using it is not permissible using it is not permissible it takes the ruling of what we mentioned before uh, of the prophet sallallahu uh, or it takes the ruling of drinking water which you're not allowed to in Ramadan what about if the person is a user of this viperous element one if they use it once or twice in the month of Ramadan they would have to bring back those one or two days But if they use it in the majority of the month or he uses it excessively then his ruling is a ruling of a person who has a marad muzmin a person who has a marad muzmin marad muzmin is a person who is has got a colonic illness a permanent illness so this particular person will say to them upon you is a fidya upon you is a fidya now we'll stop there bi kareem anything which i've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan and allah and his messenger are free from it subhanak allahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh